Dude, saving money is stupid. When people say, oh, is this get rich quick? You better hope that it is. The internet is a vast ocean, teeming with self-proclaimed experts and gurus, each promising the key to wealth and success. But when the lines between sound advice and sensationalism blur, it's easy to get swept away by the current. From the controversial to the downright dangerous, these so-called experts often dish out advice that can lead you astray. And their target? Persons actively searching for wealth and knowledge. If you take the modern world, where people are trying to teach you how to come in and trade actively in stocks. What's up, Tim Sykes, millionaire, mentor, and trader? I want to teach you. I want to help you. Well, I regard that as roughly equivalent to trying to induce a bunch of young people to start off on heroin. I'm here to support you. I want to see you on this jet with us next time. It's awesome, and you can totally do it. You love Join Jetsu. Us right now. You love Jetsu. He made it. You come just on. don't know it. It is really stupid. And when you're already rich, to make your money by encouraging people to get rich by trading. If you're a millionaire, why sell a course? Um. Then there are people on the TV and they say, I have this book. It will teach you how to make 300% a year. The millionaire booklet's gonna give you eight steps. And all you have to do is pay for shipping. First you're gonna pay shipping and handling. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. And the people who do this all day think they're useful citizens, but they mislead you on purpose. And I get tired of it, and I don't think it's right. You're giving away your free book, you're just trying to sell me stuff. Of course I am. I have no shame, I have no guilt, I have no hesitation. Today, we're scrutinizing some of the most dubious advice given by two of these online gurus, Grant Cardin and Dan Locke. Firstly, Grant claims that saving money is dumb. Dude, saving money is stupid. It is, like, it is ridiculous. The only thing that ever happens to people that save money is they end up losing it, it ends up getting lost, it ends up getting stolen, it ends up getting burnt. Having cash sit in a bank is selfish. What makes this advice ridiculous is that, just a few years ago, Grant Cardin was promoting saving money himself, and Quiet recently even boasted about having enough money in his savings account. I need to treat money like it's sacred. The savings rate in this country was over 6.5% for 30 years. Now it's collapsed again. What are you doing? Truth is, most people don't like money. I know they don't like money. You know how I know they don't like money? Because as soon as you get some, you get rid of it. You buy shit with it. You know, my father told me when I was six years old, he said, watch the pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. When you watch pennies and nickels and dimes and quarters, when you watch that, you're gonna pay attention to the bigger flows. People that are not disciplined with money don't end up with money. People that waste money on dumb things don't end up with money. There's something universal about money. Waste it, somebody else gets it. This makes many question his intent. Well, as it appears, Grant Cardin has the Cardin Capital, where he encourages people to, instead of giving their monies to the banks in the name of saving, they are better of giving their hard-earned dollars to him to invest and pay them dividends. Other ways he suggests you spend your money instead of saving it is to spend it on his online courses and offline events. Picture this, you've just lost your job unexpectedly. You've got bills to pay, a family to feed. In this scenario, wouldn't having a safety net of savings be a lifeline? Quiet recently in his event promotional video with Damon John, the two encouraged people to spend their last $1,000 on their event if that was the last amount you had. So if you're down to your last $1,000, this, yeah. this offer today is $9.97, grantcardone.com forward slash shark. Okay? Yeah. You're down, a guy's sitting there right now watching this and I'm, I got my last grand, dude, and I got Christmas coming. Should you spend it on this? Absolutely. I would tell you the same thing. If you look critically at the ways of Grant Cardin, his agenda has really transitioned from providing real value to people to becoming a money-sucking agent, willing and ready to suck every penny of yours in the name of helping you. The advice he gives to the public, he doesn't practice it himself and the goal clearly is to keep you spending and coming back to spend even more on courses and more events. If there is any part of Grant Cardin's advice on savings to take into practice, focus on the old Grant, the old grant that encouraged people to save their monies because of the uncertainties of life. Clearly, saving money isn't as dumb as Grant Cardin makes it out to be. Grant also advises that buying a home is for suckers and makes mockery of the idea of owning a home. Houses were built for banks. They weren't built for, for people. They were built for banks. 
And, and, then, and then the people were lied to and said, oh, a house is a great investment. A house is one of the dumbest, worst investments a human being could possibly make. Well, this advice is terrible. Terrible because again, Grant tells you to instead of owning a home, rather rent. Rent from real estate developers like himself and others. And what is even more sickening is, give the money for your home ownership to him to invest in his properties and give you dividends thereafter. Isn't that crazy advice? Yet people fall for this because of the charisma and energy he speaks with. Personally owning a home is a significant financial asset. Unlike rent payments, which vanish into your landlord's pocket each month, mortgage payments contribute to your equity in the home. Over time, this can build into a substantial nest egg. Home ownership isn't for everyone. It requires a commitment, both in terms of time and money. But to label it as a sucker's game seems overly simplistic and dismissive of the potential advantages. The truth is, when done right, buying a home can be a smart financial move. It's not just about having a permanent place to live. It's about investing in your future, building your wealth, and securing your financial stability. So the next time you hear Grant say, buying a home is for suckers, remember the intent is to get you to invest your money in his portfolios to make him rich. Home ownership isn't just for suckers, it's for smart investors too. And he, Grant Cardin himself, owns a lot of them. Thirdly, Grant Cardin suggests that we should take on more debt. You have to have debt to live into the future. The idea of taking on more debt might sound appealing at first glance, especially if it's presented as a stepping stone to wealth. Apple Computer has two $196 billion in cash today. They will borrow money tomorrow morning. Debt is good. And there's not a wealthy company on this uh, planet, not one wealthy company on the planet Earth that is cash free, that does not use debt. I don't want to get out of debt. But wait a minute. Debt, more often than not, leads to financial instability and stress. It's like a weight around your neck, constantly dragging you down. And this experience is not just from one or two persons, but countless people, even business people around the globe. Grant Cardin simplifies how you can easily become rich by getting money from the bank and using it for business investments and becoming rich. But what he doesn't tell you is the other side of the coin. If the business fails, which many do, people are left with a mountain of debt and no clear way to pay it off. It's a recipe for disaster. Taking on more debt isn't a pathway to wealth, it's a pathway to financial stress. Switching gears to Dan Locke, one of his infamous advice is to get money fast and quick. One of the most toxic concepts and one of the most toxic ideas that you've been exposed to is this, that somehow if you make money in a very short period of time, that somehow you make money quickly, it is a, a bad idea. When people say, oh, is this get rich quick? You better hope that it is. This idea, as tantalizing as it sounds, is a dangerous path to tread. It's the luring call of get-rich-quick schemes, promising you a fortune overnight that has led many to financial ruin. Dan Locke gives the impression that there is a quicker and smarter way to riches that you have no idea about or yet to discover. He gives an impressive story of how he migrated from Asia to Canada with his mother after she got divorced. How even he as an immigrant has succeeded and this story challenges and inspires his audience that they can also do great. After you are sold out on his free content, he now tells you if you want the real keys and nuggets, you have to purchase his course. And this course is not in the 100s of dollars, we are talking about thousands. There are stories of his victims, who have paid over $50,000, in their quest to find out more, about how to get rich quick, the Danlock way, and it's just the next course, after the next course, after the next course. By now you've spent 10 grand on Danlock products. I just totally yeah. 10 yeah. grand on Danlock products. Uh, the opportunity cost totaling with scholarships and everything else of just kind of wasting time on this HTC thing is yep. $50,000. Yeah, I don't like to hear that. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, no, I, I know I gotta face that. Like I, I gotta live with that. Guys, this isn't a cheap, this isn't 2,500 bucks, it's 2,500 bucks. Then it's a $2,000 upsell. Then it's a $2,000 or one, however you can afford it, closures in black thing. Then it's yeah. a $2,500 a month upsell after that. And then you have to factor in the opportunity cost of what all this is gonna take you before you may realize like uh, Garrett and Anthony did that it wasn't getting them anywhere. You end up learning the basic things you can easily find on the internet 
and more talks about he Dan Locke and his brand. Website that has the inner circle stuff. There's like a whole bunch of videos, like, you know, goal setting, just super basic shit, man. You yeah. can literally find it in a $10 audiobook. But I didn't know, unfortunately. Getting rich is clearly possible, but to get rich quick, that needs to be looked into, and anyone that promises that, you need to be careful about. The world is littered with stories of people who chase the illusion of quick money, only to find themselves in financial and emotional distress, like many of Dan Locke's students who are stuck in a sunk cost. As it appears, the only person making money quicker is Dan Locke himself. Wealth building is a marathon, not a sprint. It requires patience, discipline, and a sound understanding of financial principles. It's about personal education, saving your money, cutting down on stupid purchases, investing wisely, and living within your means. It's about understanding that there are no shortcuts to financial freedom. So, when someone like Dan Locke tells you to get money fast and quick, remember it's just another sales pitch to rid you of your hard-earned money. The internet, while a treasure trove of knowledge, can also be a breeding ground for misinformation. It's easy to be swayed by the allure of quick riches, the promise of success without the traditional structures, or the dismissal of age-old wisdom. What is your take on Grant Cardone and Dan Locke's advice?